Hello. 10 people, 12 people. Hello everyone, we're just waiting for people to join us. Feel free to wait in the meantime. <laughs> All right, so we're giving a few more minutes for everyone to join. That's the rainbow, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's just started pouring and the, the roof over this area is very thin. So let us know if you can hear us okay. Can you hear us okay? Hey Wes. Yes, Thanks, sweetheart. Kenza. Hey Kenza. <laughs> Hey Adam, thank you. So there's quite a bit of delay then, huh? So again guys, let us know if you can hear us or if the rain is overpowering our voices. Just type in a little comment. Okay, Paula. Nice. So there's like a minute delay, like maybe even longer. Well, let's ask another question and see. All right, as fast as you can, answer this question. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Speak a little bit louder. Okay. 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 Wow, you guys are slow. What? They're slow to tell us their favorite color. I know, there's like a minute something delayed. I guess that's fine. Hey, Rochelle. Right. So we'll just speak up a little bit. The rain will be gone probably not too loud, not too long. Purple. Purple. We're getting the first color. So that's like a minute and a half, two minutes. It's probably like 45 seconds. Right, cool, Adam. Okay. So where should we start? Um, yeah, good question. So we should, I think we should probably start with some of the general updates. Um, the most exciting upcoming thing right now is the Conscious Class 2 New Year's Eve party. Um, and it's more than just a party, it's also a retreat. So... The party itself, which you've probably seen us both talk about online, is going to be this super beautiful, luxury, um, like Gatsby style gowns, um, cigars, whiskey cigars are provided by Rocky Patel, this beautiful, awesome um, New Year's Eve party. Ventino is going to go crazy with the fireworks, per usual. Um, and that's December 31st. But the party goes to like 5 a.m. the next day. So that's coming up. Do you have more on the party itself? Um, well, just that, I mean, you described it from one angle, but also it's just a really amazing opportunity to come together with um, those from the community, especially those in Holland and maybe the UK, easiest access. But from anywhere in the world, you can make it here if you really want to. And uh, just spend an amazing time together and raise those vibrations and start the new year off with a really intentional crowd. Um, your face is cut up. There you go. So it'd be amazing to see as many of you here as possible. It'll be a, a fairly private party still. Like it'll be fairly exclusive, maybe like 100 people, something like that. So, um, and I heard that some people were intimidated to come to the party. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't even money or something, but they... Yeah, I heard some of that too. So I don't quite understand that. Um, there's no reason to be intimidated by a party. There's just going to be amazing people and you're going to blend right in. I promise you that. It's going to be a very loving environment. It's, uh, we do ask you to dress really nice, like top notch, because that's kind of what makes the, the vibe of the party also. And it's just something that I really love. It's that classic, back to the old times, kind of uh, timeless... Um, appearance and carrying yourself with that intention just to the best of your ability so we do ask that of you to dress really nice um, 
pretty good effort in. But other than that, there's really nothing intimidating about this party. It's just beautiful and fun and amazingly loving. So Conscious Class is um, kind of this party brand that I'm starting more or less. It's just organically evolved. Last year at my birthday, I wanted to throw a party. And I've always had this thing for, or not always, but in recent years, I've had an appreciation for like the old days, of, like I said, like jazz and where people used to just like dress up to go to the grocery store and, um, you know, <laughs> uh, what's it called? Chivalry? Chivalry? Chivalry. <laughs> Chivalry. <laughs> Chivalry and, and gentlemanliness and that, um, that whole era of, um, there's just something timeless about it and, and I have an affinity to that. So I wanted to bring that back into the party scene, party scene. The birthday party was epic. It was. So, Wesley, why are you not here this time? Huh? Rude. Very rude. <laughs> I don't take anything personally but that. <laughs> That's hard. Um, so, yeah, the party is just um, in that style, in that vein of having a conscious intention to carry yourself with class, to carry yourself with kindness, to carry yourself with... Um, with the highest intention in everything you do to make every aspect of your expression a deliberate one, a conscious one. So I decided on conscious class. And so uh, my birthday party last year was the first. And we just decided three, three weeks before New Year's to uh, do a New Year's party. And then I thought, well, why don't we continue this and make it conscious class too? So there might be more parties. Um, there will be more parties in the future that are also part of this intention. So nothing intimidating about it. It's just an um, opportunity to come together intentionally and carry the highest version of yourself into that party. And you, and you should just see how it feels being at a party like this with an intention like this, how people feel. It's not like going to another normal party. It's not like going to the club for New Year's. It's like, it's like entering where people are all being totally intentional. There's, no, there's not this like mode this not this like air on top of how you're being where you're kind of trying to be cool and it's totally like last year i remember people crying in gratitude like bentinho was doing the sort of cheers with this like beautiful champagne tower and you just looked around and people had their like hands on their heart and they're crying and people have new friends it was just it's beautiful it's not a normal party it's not just like going clubbing for new year's yeah come make some new lifelong friends yeah so, um so also there is another opportunity, which is to continue this party into January uh, 7th for this is the most affordable because it's so last minute. Also, it's the most affordable a week long family style team immersion retreat that we've ever done and probably ever will do. So uh, there's still like six spots available or something like that. So um, this is a great opportunity for you to come be with us in person for seven days eight nights, I think, or seven nights, eight days. Right. And, um, and party, but also have meditations and sessions with myself mostly, but also uh, morning sessions with Annie, because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> so morning meditations with Annie. Um, and Anurag Gupta, for those of you who know, my good friend Anurag, um, he will also attend for a couple of days and he'll be there as a guest speaker. And um, also downtime, you know, during downtime, he'll be there having dialogues with people as he usually does so that's an opportunity to check it out at continuousr.com slash cc2 um yeah yeah if you can see the bottom of this continuousr.com slash cc2 cool okay what else well, I just want to be a little clear, too, about what a team immersion retreat. It's like a family style retreat where you're really like mixing in with the team. So those of us who are going to be around, it's it's totally like we're eating together. We're um, going doing outings together. We're playing games at night together. We're dancing together. It's like really it's like going on vacation together, just super immersion with the team. So these are the coolest retreats. We just had one in Las Vegas, which was the best yet, that truly the best retreat that I've ever been to. But they're all the, like the most recent one is always the best one, but this one actually was the best. Um, so it's, I think of it as like the most, the most potent a retreat can be because it's utter immersion. So this is, 
like he said, this is the cheapest one that, that we've ever done, just because it is so last minute and because it's tagged on to the New Year's Eve party. So you get to come for the New Year's Eve party and then stay for the seven consecutive days and totally immerse with us and not just with us, but with Anurag and Annie, which is, this is the, gonna be the best one yet. By the way, we'll answer some, uh, we'll do some Q&A at the end of this. So once we're done with kind of the announcements and the overview of what's coming up, feel free to ask some of your questions and I'll give you a prompt for this. So as some of you know, I've been on a bit of a sabbatical from public life. I mean, I've still been on social media and stuff. I've made my posts uh, from time to time, but I've kind of laid low for a bit and retreated. And so I haven't really done any retreats um, in the last two years, not public events anyway. So we've, uh, maybe three months ago, I started to feel the inspiration again. And um, you better be Wesley. <laughs> um, we um, decided to do another public event, like a larger one, like a week long residential retreat, like we used to do in Barlow. And so this one is gonna be in July, uh, 2020. In Costa Rica, most of you probably have heard of this or seen the promotion. So, um, yeah, this is the first one in about two years, the first real large public event. And uh, again, would love to see as many of you as possible there. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more, giving you a glimpse of, or sort of an insight into, I suppose my updated overview of spirituality. I've been working on this concept of a unified theory of spirituality. Um, it's always been my intention to sort of come up with a unified theory of spirituality. Any retreats in the Netherlands? Yeah, the one that's off of New Year's Eve is gonna be in the Netherlands. So go to bintinyamasara.com slash cc2, the number two. Um, so what was his name? The Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. No, no, the... Uh, Sabbatical. No, <laughs> the um, Unified Theory of Spirituality. Oh, right. So, all right, my vision is really to upgrade spiritual understandings and teachings and education on this planet. And so, as you guys know, I've gone through many, many, many years of um, um, seeking and studying and meditating and contemplating and distilling and teaching all kinds of different paths and distilling it. <laughs> yes, we won't. <laughs> Richard, nice. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so to be able to offer something to people that they don't have to go through this whole journey themselves, they don't have to go and they don't have to go and uh, seek for years. They don't have to go and go to India and uh, try to figure out which books are best and try to figure out this and that. And, just save so much time and confusion. Because if you look at any other field in our society, we have education for it. We have the best schools for this and the best schools for medical education and the best schools for science and for mathematics. And, but when it comes to spirituality, all you're left with is this sort of woo-woo community and your friends and family don't know anything about it. And you're like, well, there must be more to life than meets the eye. But then you have no clue where to start. And so you do the same thing everyone else does, which it's fine. There's even a beauty to it, you could say. But in terms of efficiency, it's not the most efficient, which is just go through like 50 different books and maybe three or four out of these books is actually helping you. It's actually helping you focus on attaining some of those internal goals, if you will, or states of being and states of freedom and clarity and integration. So what if there was some type of a school or university or course curriculum or overview or platform that contained the most distilled version of all the most essential elements of the spiritual path that are essential to every entity, no matter who they are, where they come from, whether they're Christians or um, Buddhists or atheists or scientists, a structural method that works, methodology, but overview also, cosmology, and unified theory, a complete unified understanding of spirituality, where all the most key components 
that are relevant for everyone regardless of their gender and background and all that are relevant. And they're laid out in such a way that within a relatively short period of time, the adept, the student, the shaker, can um, I'm getting distracted by the comedy. <clears throat> I don't know if we can. Can, um, what was the thing? Oh yeah, within a relatively short period of time, you can actually get this complete overview of spirituality and have this feeling of your, um, your inner map being laid out completely. So now for myself, this intention has been accomplished, meaning that for me, this unified theory has been realized. So there's nothing out there, just to give you an example of the benefits of this. So far in the last year and a half or so, there's nothing that I've read or come across spiritually, whether it's channeled materials from extraterrestrials or um, ancient, beautiful dead gurus from India or new age teachers that are up and coming using social media or um, entrepreneurial gurus or there's nothing in any of these fields, in any of these niches of spirituality, empowerment, self-realization. There's nothing that I've come across in the last year and a half or so that was in any way a question for me or out of place or did not fit in to this overarching understanding that I have. So every, every component that I've come across, I can place inside of this structure, inside this unified understanding. So internally it's been attained, that goal has been attained, which feels great. And I wanna be able to transfer that goal to you guys in as clear a way as possible. I've already tried to begin to do this years ago with trinfinityacademy.com, which is a free online school for enlightenment and empowerment. Um, and I've tried to do it through my courses and matinumasara.tv and civilization upgraders uh, courses. And so to an extent we have succeeded, there's a lot of clarity in that. There's a lot of shortcuts in that. There's a lot of distillation that is provided in all these retreats and everything. And I'm still working on a cohesive platform that somehow most efficiently transfers this unified understanding of, sp of spirituality, cosmo cosmology, and a practical direct means to as fast as possible um, attain the states and understandings and the realizations and the manifestations that you desire um, and that are relevant for almost every seeker. So that's something I'm working on. It's just a work in progress. It's a, um, it evolves as we go along. But this Costa Rica retreat will be the first um, big event where I'll start to, um, I'll just start to sort of speak from that context so that um, it will still be fresh and in the moment and spontaneous, but I'll be tying it back into this understanding, into this intention of transferring sort of a unified understanding of spirituality. Um, and for those of you who have followed me throughout the years, doesn't necessarily mean it will be like completely new or something completely different. It's just that it will help you tie some of those components in even clearer. Um, and for me, clarity is always key. Like if you are really clear on what is what and you're clear on the path and you're clear on the journey and you just, it's not just the mental clarity, you feel it, you've embodied it and there's this lived clarity, then that comes with such a confidence and such a freedom already and such a peace of mind in everyday situations and a peace of mind towards your own seeking, towards your own curiosity for more understanding and exploration and realization, that's really priceless. So um, that, that just, I just wanna do my best to deliver that at the Costa Rica event in um, July. Do you wanna see some comments? Oh yeah. Looks like they stopped commenting. Oh, that's fun. I'm glad you're still human, Ben. Thanks for continuing the journey. Well, it's debatable, but <laughs> thank you. I do aim to be relatable, which is why I do the things I do in the ways that I do them. Nice, Nestor. See you there. 
we're gonna have fun. It's gonna be a blast. Like this private cove, um, amazing new resort. I think it's four or five years old. It's built from the ground up. It's actually it looks really nice, really decent, and the prices are really great because it's Costa Rica. And just imagine four, five, six hundred people being there together, um, raising the vibes and understanding. It'd be pretty cool. And it's all inclusive. <clears throat> so much love. You guys can see pictures if you go to bentinomasara.com slash events slash Costa Rica. And just see the whole overview and buy tickets. Love you too. You're welcome. Um, so, in the meantime, I'll be doing a little tour of sorts and just a few weekend events that are in the works. Now, they're not finalized yet, but we have a tentative schedule. So I'll just read it out um, in case you're near one of those areas. We're aiming for February 22nd and 23rd to do a weekend event in Amsterdam. Um, March 21st to 22nd in London. April 11th and 12th in Naples, Florida. Again, April 11th and 12th. These are tentative, so, but keep your schedule open. Look out for the official announcements. And as always, check the schedule at mtmsr.com slash events. Simple to remember. Um, May 16th and 17th, Los Angeles, California. May 30th and 31st, New York City. And then July 4th through the 11th, that is the uh, eight-day Costa Rica event, or seven-day, something like that, week-long. Um, and there might be a couple of impromptu family style team immersion retreats. And these just kind of happen when they happen. Uh, cause sometimes the team goes to a certain destination and they all come together because my team is pretty spread out, uh, over the uh, globe. So sometimes we like book an Airbnb or something like that. And we decide to all come together to be able to work more efficiently together for a couple of weeks. And then often, um, that's the perfect opportunity for us to offer some people to kind of jump in on that and like be part of that experience or at least part of that um, trip. So these don't really have a lot of um, announcement time typically, like usually it's like two, three, four weeks ahead of time. We'll try to be quicker in the future with our events. I know I've always been last minute just because I have no sense of what my schedule feels like or looks like past about one or two months from now. So. Um, and I've typically not wanted to pin myself down in any particular way like that. So, but I understand that it's not always easiest to do things on the fly. Some of you have very structured, located lives and jobs and families and all that stuff. So we'll try to be a little better with our announcements. Hence our schedules being announced right now. And what we'll put this on the website very soon. But yeah, those uh, team immersion retreats, you just kind of have to watch social media and uh, subscribe to Bentinho Massaro newsletter on the main website, bentinomassaro.com to be updated on those. Is that it? Let's see. <clears throat> we can go, uh, we're, again, for those who just joined, we'll be going into Q&A in a little bit. So prepare your questions. If they're too rude, we'll skip them. Do we want to mention this? We can. Cool. All right, so part of me kind of coming out of this sabbatical of sorts and kind of stepping more back into the public life and just embracing and accepting that that's part of my role here in this incarnation. Um, I've had more fun with it. I've, I've felt better in this role because for me, this is all a role. Like I'm not doing this for me. Uh, I don't need to be having this live stream thing and like arrange, uh, put the mm -hmm. lights there. And, like, it's not why I exist. It's not what drives me, right? Um, it doesn't really benefit me. Like I don't need that for my personal well-being. So, and that goes for pretty much everything I do in my life these days. Um, so everything is a role, pretty much. Everything is an act that is chosen 
quite spontaneously and intuitively out of a sense of what can provide the greatest benefit to this transforming planet. And I know that I have some value to offer based on just my innate talents, my intention for this incarnation, my blueprint, my abilities to convey and distill information, um, my direct experience with all this stuff that I'm talking about, because everything I speak about um, is backed up with direct experience. So to be able to transfer that information to others, I understand the value in this changing day and place and time. So, but I've had to come to an acceptance of sorts of the fact that I am playing roles and that I'm playing these roles um, authentically. Can one play a role and still be authentic? And the answer definitely is yes. It just depends on what the motivation is for the role. If the motivation is not self-serving, if the motivation is not a blind, um, as um, Corey calls it sometimes, mode, like being in a mode, if it if it's jumps out of emptiness, and it jumps out of emptiness because you're always oriented in a state of looking for where can I benefit, and not out of a needy place of I want to be the one that helps this person carry the glasses back to the kitchen. You know, people that come from ego when they try to serve, they just mess things up like they throw over the glasses because they need to help. And if they're not helping, they're not valuable. And so it's not this constant need to be of service to others. That's not present here either. It's much deeper than that. It's like intrinsic to the nature. It's like part of the substance of creation is to, to see all portions as one with itself. And so every breath I take, every thought I have, has become geared towards service to others. I know not everyone believes that. That's because they don't know what it's like. But once, and there's a few of you that do know what that's like, or are starting to know what that's like, and that's what I call shepherds, or ultimately mirrors, which is what I teach in my Civilization Upgraders courses. Um, then you, so some of you do understand what I'm talking about, and uh, some of you may not, but rest assured that when you empty yourself out more and more and more, you'll start to naturally live like this. And you'll start to understand the, the paradox that you'll have to learn to accept and, and deal with and navigate. Um, that comes with being empty on the inside, but having to appear as something on the outside, otherwise people have nothing to relate to. They have nothing to receive from, you see. So I have to show, I have to talk to you like, like this right now. Otherwise, the message is not coming across. Do I feel like this is, this is what I need to do for myself? Am I trying to get somewhere with this? No, absolutely not. So then how does one balance that paradox? And, you know, that's quite an interpersonal spiritual journey. Um, and so I share about this too. I teach about this in these courses and I will continue to share about this. Because I think a lot of you guys who came here with a blueprint to be of service to others during this transformational period of time on planet Earth, um, I'm going to deal to some degree with those paradoxes. And they're very subtle and they're very tricky and they can be very confusing. So I've been blessed enough to have the right friends and the right inner guides and the right clarity to be able to navigate those challenges uh, fairly clearly and quickly. So I can help um, bring clarity and, and some reassurance to those who are going through that transformation of becoming a shepherd, not just being a person consciousness, but becoming shepherding consciousness and beyond that even mirror consciousness. So it's cool stuff. It's a really, it's a really cool subtle science and it's not talked a lot, uh, about a lot. So it does excite me to talk about it because it also has a cutting edgeness to it. Plus the need for it right now is great among those of you who are wanting to become leaders and step up your game and be of service to others, but in a spiritually really aligned way um, and balance that out or, or combine that with enlightenment somehow, which is really the emptiness of ego or the seeing through the ego illusion. So as part of that sort of re-embracing my role, as uh, this figure character thing, suit, guy, cigar, watch, eyes, mouth, hair, friend. Um, the re-embracing of that has been, very, has been very good for me, has been very beautiful. And so as part of that, the inspiration has arisen to do some kind of a 
like, because people that come across my name are like, they're, who is this guy? And what he teaches things that are kind of all over the place. And I've heard some of it here. I've heard some of it there. He adds a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's unique in a way, but then it's this. And there's not a really clear understanding of what I teach, which I understand it's because it is so varied and it is so vast. And so I do want to convey this in a clearer and more concise way as much as we can. But more importantly than that, even in order to be relatable is to have a relatable type of ongoing content. I just felt that. So we have decided to um, do a podcast of sorts. So we're currently working out the logistics of where to do it, how to set it up, we're working together with a company that's helping us kind of set this up and guide this. Um, but we're looking to start sometime in the first three or four months of 2020 to begin recordings of a weekly podcast where I'll be teaching, I'll be sharing, Corey will be on it most of the time, I think, as well. Uh, we might have some guests from time to time. We'll be clarifying some of those points. We'll be answering some of your questions. We'll be commenting on some of the things that are happening in the world. Uh, I'll be clarifying some of the really subtle paradoxes and we'll just have some, you know, probably some fun times just dialoguing and, and uh, joking around. Um, so we're not sure yet what it's going to look like exactly, but it's going to have a combination of all these elements and uh, probably some other unforeseen elements. Some fun surprises and announcements, I'm sure. So that we can build a relationship again. Like, that's what I felt. It's like, mm -hmm. for the last two years, I've not been able to really build a relationship with my audience. Um, like four or five years ago, when I was in Boulder, Colorado, I used to do weekly meetings and they would show up on YouTube and, and, and the following would increase and the um, content would keep being added to and people were excited, there was a lot of discussion. So there was a, a relationship that was being built there. And we hope that the podcast will be able to do that again at a grander scale, at a, in a clearer way, in a more relatable way. And um, also for mainstream, but still staying really as close as we can to sort of the advancedness of some of the things that I teach as well. And so a combination of relatable um, podcast content that are, is easily shareable and people can relate to it no matter what level they're at, all the way down into the nuances. If people want to watch the whole show and not just some of the clips that are more mainstream friendly, they can really watch the whole like hour or whatever it is and go in depth. And a lot of you guys will love this because I just know you're gonna love this because <laughs> you'll be able to relate to all the subtleties that we're sharing and like, mm, it'll be rich with teaching. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be great. And um, that's the concept of that. <laughs> She's got me so excited. No, it's fun. It's new for us though, like the execution of this is new, so bear with us, but um, we hope to begin broadcasting this within the next three or four months. Because like, how do you have a dialogue? How do you have a podcast type dialogue? This is another thing, like I don't really feel like playing that role of being a host, you know, like, um, like Joe Rogan, for example. Uh, these guys do an awesome job at generating interesting content and inviting guest speakers. But I don't want to be a host, I don't feel like a host. <laughs> uh, it's just gonna feel weird, like I just want to be who I am and I want to teach and I want to share and that's already a role enough for me. And I play all these other roles in the, in the background um, of the things that we're doing and the projects that we're setting up. So I really don't want to be that guy that like is the podcast host. So we've been thinking about how to do that. So Corey's probably going to be um, hosting most of the podcast. And then as long as I have a prompt, as long as I'm prompted with a question or with a topic or with something interesting, then I'll go off on a tangent, as you guys know. <laughs> And I won't stop speaking until you <laughs> punch me in the face. Um, so, but somehow we, we just got to go through with it and see, you know, see how it flows and evolves. And uh, it will probably evolve over the course of the months that the show launches. It'll probably change its format a little bit. Um, and we want it to look kind of nice too, and like have a nice kind of background and be dressed up and like have that sort of more classy vibe. While we're having these discussions, that's kind of my vision, just like with the conscious class party, bring back some of that sort of timeless quality into the equation as well. So yeah, it's gonna be cool. Um, I 
Anything to add? You're good. <clears throat> We're going to just go ahead with the questions. We've had some really fun brainstorming sessions about the podcast. And somehow we would love to include John, Janet Marchant. <laughs> for <laughs> those of you who know this beautiful old lady, dear friend of mine. <laughs> and she just... Um, <laughs> When she gets on a roll, like, she is continuously hilarious. Like, she cracks me up. <laughs> so to somehow include some portions of her would be awesome, too. And so we'll invite some other team members from time to time, probably. And again, like, some guest speakers. Maybe even feature some of you guys from time to time if you have something really interesting to share. But we don't, at the same time, we don't want to dilute it. We don't want it to become a show. We don't want right. it to become... Like where we just have random guest speakers every week show up and like you either like it or you don't like what they have to say. We don't want it to become like that. We do want it to be really guided and there to be a leadership throughout it uh, of content where the content is guided and it is clear and it is to the point and it's beneficial and it is advanced and it's cutting edge every single time you watch. That is my mm. intention anyway. I can't wait for this. I think it's going to be huge. And so again, then we'll have the ability to have an ongoing relationship with you guys. And we can share some of the projects that we're up to and like some of the travels that I'm on and like what do I do behind the scenes and what are we creating as a team and what are some of the new processes or developments and all that. So um, you also get a closer peek into our lives probably and be connected to that. And we'll come up over the years, we'll come up with better and better ways for you guys to get connected to us and to be able to participate in some of those projects that are sort of community friendly, that can be, um, that can be um, implemented and where you guys can be deployed in a way, you know, uh, to be extensions of this vision of an enlightened civilization, basically. All right, shall we go to the Q&A? So, <clears throat> fire away, what are your questions, guys? Mark, welcome. I think we have our first question. Huh? Would love to know if you have listened to any of Ajashanti's recordings. Uh, back in the day, yes, but this is years ago. Um, yep. Let's see more. Oh, oh that's a long question. <laughs> Jeez. Andreas read a book. Well, let's just go for it. You want to read it? <clears throat> you want me to read this? You pretend to be the question, so I'm prompt. All right. It's easier. Hey, Bentinho. My question is about making a decision. So after a while of planning and strategizing on how to succeed and get in the music industry and become a teacher myself in some way, I found a way. But after a while, I stumble upon a video of yours, which you say to become the vision, and since then, everything changed. A huge weight got off my chest, and I'm more in the present and more clear-headed, which it feels great. But sometimes, out of nowhere, I get a random inspiration slash excitement about becoming a pilot. Ooh. Which, by the way, it's always been a passion of mine, but I never took it seriously. I'm having a hard time knowing which path to choose because if I become a pilot, then it means that I'll be heading down to a completely different road that might also bring the end of my other dream. I feel like the question is, is it my heart talking or just my mind finding ways to relieve me of the pressure of my dreams of making it in the music industry? Sweet. That's awesome. Are you laughing at our first I'm question? not laughing at it. I'm laughing with it. It's, okay. it's full of love and sweetness. All right. So, um, hey, Tina. So that actually is a great question because a lot of people have this come up in their lives repeatedly. It's like you're on it. You feel an inspiration and you have the boldness to act on the inspiration. So you begin, you start that journey, you start that path. And like two months down the road, you start making some momentum. Yeah, opportunities are created and attracted to you. And uh, there's a tangible form that begins to take shape. Your dream is beginning to manifest. And now suddenly you get this excitement for this other thing that comes back, whether you've already had it and it just comes back in, it pops into your heart field. And you just feel it bubble up and you're like, mm, I'm excited to go be a pilot. So what do I do? There's only so much time in a day. There's only so much time in a month. There's only so many opportunities I can say yes to without saying no to others. So it's a really good question. Um, or it's a really relatable question. And the thing is she got 
if you really want to resolve this thing and never have this question again, you have to completely revamp the way you see this whole thing called life and this whole thing called um, success, really. When it comes to being successful in your dreams and your manifestations, it's really important that you understand it from a non-linear point of view. Because right? if you get too linear with your perspective on manifesting your life and what you're choosing, then you're going to be playing the game that most people play and you're going to have... It starts raining again. Let us know if you can't hear it. So... Like my life, I, I play so many roles. Like I'm up to so many different things. Um, I'm not a one... I'm not a one-type kind of guy. I'm not a one-type kind of thing. So, and I recommend there's a fullness to that. There's a, a com much more complete development of your of your entityness, your character that comes from that. So I really encourage you to open your mind and realize that you can really become all these things. It may take some time in the relative world. It might take some practice. But if you're not in a rush and you just except that you have these many different parallel trajectories that all together help you become who you need to be, who you need to become to fulfill your blueprint. Because that's really what success is. It's not about making it in the music industry. That's just a component. That's just a small, tiny component of who you are here to be. So if you think from the limited earthly point of view that that is all that you have to become and that that's what you have to put all your time and energy into and that that will define who you are as a human being, then you've just greatly limited who you are. From the broader perspective of yourself, you would know that all these different things that come up on your path that excite you, they're all completing you. They're all like putting all the pieces of the puzzle back together of who you really are so that in this physical life, you can express yourself to the fullest of your soul's ability. But if you don't allow yourself to develop in all these different ways, you're not going to be able to be as complete of a package and the execution or the successful manifestation and exuberance or exuberance or radiance um, of that soul blueprint that you have for this particular life will not come about as fully as it otherwise could. It's like not turning the light all the way up um, or not cutting the diamond uh, in its many facets to make it as brilliant as it could be. You're just having like five sides instead of like 80 sides to it. So allow yourself, see yourself like a crystal that every time new sides are cut, you're being cut, you're being cut, you're being cut into a more perfected shape, um, into a more full expression, a more full vessel, a more capable vessel that's more capable of realizing its um, desired potential as an incarnate being. Now, not to stress you out by saying all this because at the same time, you already are all that. So it is really about sitting back sometimes and just knowing the vibration, feeling the vibration, feeling the totality and the completeness and the wholeness of who you really are already at that level. But then doing that inevitably while you're still breathing and pooping and, and eating and smoking maybe, you will find that as you allow your conscious mind to sort of sink back into that blueprint space of the soul, of the true beingness, that restful place of freedom, of expansiveness, of that broader perspective of yourself, you will find that something, you're not going to stay in that meditation for um, three years straight. It's very unlikely. It happens for some people, but it's very unlikely. And it's not higher or lower than the re-manifesting thing. But you'll find that after a few minutes, maybe even, or a half an hour, or a few days of doing this sort of meditative approach, something in you will be activated. It's like the soul kind of taps on these, these dull, dim areas within your energy system, your bodies, your mental body, emotional body, energy body, physical body. And it just kind of starts waking up these elements, these components. And it starts arousing this energy in you, which comes with inspirations, and which comes with visions, and images, and desires. So if you can allow all that to happen impersonally, meaning to not define these things as being meaningful to you in some specific way, other than just all of this is part of my expression and I'm allowing it to happen through me. 
so that you don't get too bogged down about anything. You don't like build walls around things. You don't get too insistent about how and when things should come about. You just kind of allow that to free flow. Allow yourself to be activated, activated, activated by your own meditations, by your own taking a step back and relaxing back into that soulness, that beingness that you are already, that completeness that's already here. That completeness will start waking up certain elements within you and those elements will want to come out. They will want to give voice to themselves. And as they go through that process of wanting to give voice to themselves and manifestation and action and, and expression, you will hit your blockages. You will hit your shadow points. You will hit your limiting ideas, which will be the causes of your frustration and your suffering and your struggle and your contractions. So you meditate on who you are. That completeness will activate certain new parts in yourself that have already been there but dormant. They've been asleep and it's waking them up. It's waking them up. You get these inspirations. You get these new visions. You want to go for it. But then your limiting mind comes in and it's like, oh, but then it means I need to do this all within the next three weeks. Otherwise, this or that. Or it'll come in and other lack beliefs. Like, oh, but how am I going to do this? I don't have the resources. I don't have the friends to do this. There are nobody around me. I'm not in the right environment. <clears throat> So all these things are going to come up at an accelerated rate because you're activating new portions of yourself. That's exciting. It should not be feared. It should be welcomed and embraced as a process. And then this gives you the opportunity, a highlighted opportunity, my, the microscope on your limiting beliefs kind of opportunity to release those beliefs, to relax those perspectives, and to bring that broader, wider, more expansive perspective into your human mind to remember the nature of God, to remember the nature of completion, to remember the nature of timelessness, to remember that you already are everything you could ever become, and to bring that peace and vastness into the mind-body experience, if you will. To meet your limiting beliefs with the broader faith-based, surrender-based, knowledge-based, true knowledge-based perspective of how the universe works and stuff. And then you will ease those smaller perspectives into alignment they will open up, they will change their perspective to then allow you to voice it, to then allow you to express it, to radiate it, to become that, to manifest it. And then you will start to see the manifestations, they're beginning to line up for you. And then something else will activate inevitably and excite you. And that's where I get to your question. Trust that you can do all of it. Now, doesn't mean you shouldn't kind of schedule it a little bit if that's what's relevant for you. If you have a really busy life and you're already a pilot and you now want to become a nurse, there is some logistics to figure out, true. But it doesn't mean that overall you cannot follow both paths. Um, there's enough time in the day to study and to learn and to develop that portion of yourself. So if it excites you, it's relevant for you. If it truly excites you, if it sets you on fire, if it lights you up thinking about it, then listen to that appreciate it don't think it has to happen right now in this moment in this particular way and complete itself by the next day those are limiting beliefs it's just an inspiration but because it comes with so much energy the limiting beliefs will also kick up with a lot of energy like oh but if it's so important then it must happen now or it must happen this way or it can't happen because it doesn't match my reality yet and all that so again heightened inspiration will bring heightened awareness to your limiting lack -like beliefs and that's where you struggle, and that's where you falter, and that's where you feel like you fail. Um, the more positively, I know this sounds cliche, but the more positively you can define those triggering moments, the more you can understand or ask yourself, what is this actually perfect for, as Anurag often says. What is this perfect for? Don't see it as a disappointment, oh, this didn't happen, that's not falling into place the way that I wanted it to. Don't define it in that way. Try to avoid that as much as you can and replace that with the perspective of faith. Like, somehow this is actually leading me into a more perfect journey where the timing lines up even better. And there's things that I cannot foresee with my physical 3D brain that are being lined up for me as we speak so that I can be the fullness of this expression more accurately, more precisely, more joyfully, and in a more balanced way. And there's certain lessons I need to learn, there's certain paths I need to take to become the fullness of who I already am in this way too, at this level too. And that just takes time and perseverance and trust and faith and surrender and self-forgiveness and acceptance and ah, all these things, yes. Um, so the more you relax about it, the more you trust it, the more all that takes care of itself. And then you start having fun just being where you're at with the journey.
knowing that at that deeper level, you can always meditate back into that completion that's already here and feel that wholeness. And then one, one activation at a time, just bring that forth, bring that forth. And over the course of three, four, five years, you look back and you're like, I feel so much better, I feel so much fuller, I feel so much more capable, so much wiser, so much smarter, so much more intelligent, so much more loving, so much more accepting, so much more stable, so much more abundant, so much more joyful, so much more possible. And that just all keeps increasing and rising as you persevere. There's some degree of perseverance that's needed at this human level. But the more faith you have, the less you need to feel like you're persevering. The less faith you have, the more it feels like struggle and perseverance. But it is a type of perseverance, is to be able to continuously say, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. What is this perfect for? This is perfect for something. I'm just not seeing it, but I have faith that it is more perfect for something. So go begin, look into the steps of becoming a pilot. Get excited, visualize it. I actually did this not too long ago myself about becoming a pilot. It, I was like, hey, wouldn't it be fun to be able to fly my own planes? Yeah, it would be fun. That's my biggest dream actually as a child. I always wanted to become a jet fighter pilot um, from as old as I can remember. After seeing Top Gun, uh, Tom Cruise, I was like, sold, that's me. Jet fighter pilot, for sure. Um, so I had my, my whole childhood wall was filled with all these different like uh, jet fighters. I knew all the names to them and stuff. Um, I was crazy about it and I was like eight, nine years old. And then when I was, I think 12 years old, right before I went to high school, um, I realized like, if I'm going to be jet fighter pilot, that means that I will, maybe there's a potential that I'll have to kill somebody else that's just like me, maybe from a different country, but they have parents, they have friends, they have family, they have children. Um, they just wanted to be a pilot too. And, um, and I have to pull the trigger and actually kill that other human being. Now, understand, I, there was nothing I wanted more, right? So it's like the biggest thing, like I couldn't wait to be a death fighter pilot. Uh, but it took me, took me 30 seconds. I was like, fuck, could I do that? Nope, I couldn't do that. So then I had to let go of that dream, which was great. This allowed me to do what I do now, which in retrospect, I much prefer. So it's, it's one of those faith moments too. Sometimes your dreams don't always work out. Sometimes you can't see how things are meant to flow for you. You, basically, you don't have the conscious ability to estimate your value. But 10 years from now, you're going to be much greater, much more skillful, much more talented, much wiser, much more vast, much more comprehensive than you can currently even imagine. So you are utterly incapable of doing the following job, which is estimating your value and planning your trajectory for your life. You're just not equipped to do it because you're still this version of you. You're still this level of consciousness. But you gotta just trust that if you follow the breadcrumb trail of what truly lights you up from within, and you just start putting some action towards that, you start allowing that more into your life, things will line up for you. And yes, in this level, it takes some time, it takes some patience, it takes surrender and faith, but you can do all that. It's not the end of the world. It's just um, the end of your thoughts. One thought at a time, just surrender it. And then you will gain more and more faith and more and more joy and bliss. So go for it, go for all of it. And take your time, don't rush it. But trust those impulses. All right, that was a long <laughs> answer. Is it, is it jet fighter or fighter jet? Um, jet fighter pilot, right? Fighter jet fighter? No, jet fighter pilot. Is it? I think so. Oh, okay. I should know, it's my dream. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. <coughs> And uh, feel free to jump in on some of these ones. Well, do you want me to read them to you? Yeah, read it. And if you're inspired, go for it. You can go. You can. Okay, I'll read this one. What's the best way to break out of a time loop, feeling stuck in a certain vibration, in a really sticky set of circumstances slash reality? Much love. Anything? This is your specialty, no? 
breakthrough boot camp. That's right. Well, so in this type of thing, what um, I would recommend if I were coaching you <laughs> uh, would be to go on the offense about this, like to actually get get into the game of um, breaking out of this time loop. I think that's how you put it, break out of a time loop. So if you feel stuck, um, there's some amount of that that you're, I, well, I would say 100% of it is consensual. Like you're participating in the stuckness. So it takes a certain willingness to experiment. So that's what I mean when I say going on the offense. It's like experimenting, trying new stuff. So just like, like what can you think of? Like what off the top of your head can you think of? Like what just feels like a shift from that? And try and like experiment and open your mind and like be optimistic and curious. So this is one thing in boot camp we talk about, which is having a growth mindset as opposed to a fixed mindset. So it's like opening up like this, just like, damn, nice, sweet. I'm in a time loop. I'm stuck in a time loop. Interesting. Nice. Like, this is good. I can get through this. I can definitely get through this. Who can I talk to? Do I have somebody like Ventino in my life? Do I have somebody who I respect or look up to or who's not in a time loop? Is there, is there any light that I can see like in any direction? Is there any, but just to, do you feel the difference between getting into the offense, like going on the offense or something like this and just being like totally on the defense, like, fuck, why is this happening to me? Why am I stuck in a time loop? This always happens. Like, what have I done wrong? What is that? What does this say about me? Man, this is, and just that sort of apathetic um, avoidance that so many of us do when we, when we're sort of in something, but we feel like the victims of it, as opposed to just being like sold word, let's do this. I'm in. So I think opting in, going on the offense is the best, uh, at least the best attitude to start with. But I'm curious what, what your first advice would be on this. Well, what I would do personally, but I don't know if Sean Smith here has direct access to that. But literally, if my mind came up with a description, what's the best way to break out of a time loop? I feel like I'm in a time loop. I would directly go to the space where there is no time, just to diffuse that thought. Basically, anytime you have a limiting definition, before you jump into believing that perspective and then trying to figure out how to solve things from within that paradigm of that perspective, realize that that perspective is creating the paradigm within which you're now gonna have to find a solution for it. If you are able to dismantle, this is a more direct path to most of your issues, um, issues, limiting beliefs, if you can diffuse, dismantle, undermine, see through, unbelieve the belief that creates the problem, then the problem typically also disappears. Now, there might still be some, um, some practical situations that you'll have to navigate, but the issue that you're projecting is really only there because you say that it is. So if you say, if I were to catch my mind thinking it's in a time loop, feeling stuck in a certain vibration, I would immediately go like, there is no time. Not just as a thought, like I would go to the state of seeing that there is no time. And then my whole limiting perspective would, because whatever you focus on from a limiting perspective state is going to open that limiting perspective up to whatever you're focused on. But most people are focused on elements that appear inside of the filter of their limiting belief. So you gotta look for something that's outside that filter of the limiting belief, not elements within it. You gotta switch paradigms to be able to soften that belief and then that perspective will adjust itself, it will open up. So you wanna bring, always bring that grander perspective, that faith-based perspective of universal, eternal, timeless, vastness, there's guidance everywhere, there's purpose to everything, blah, 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 blah. all those sort of cliche spiritual understandings. You wanna to get to the direct experience, the direct recognition of some of these expanded perspectives when you're triggered with limiting perspective. Some days it's easier than others, granted, but you can always do this to some degree. You can always make an effort towards it. Uh, and really the effort is to relax. Make the effort to relax. Oh, and remember, take a deep breath. Remember the broader perspective. Remember the times where you had a bigger overview when you felt this excitement and you felt this sense of being an eternal soul on a journey and everything is fine and everything is kind of a play. And then you bring that playful expanded perspective to your limiting perspective and then the limiting perspective is dismantled, it's diffu diffused, it's undermined. It's seen through to not be true. 
And then you don't have to figure out a solution inside of the paradigm of being in a time loop because you see that you're not in a time loop. You're not stuck either. There's no sticky set of circumstances in reality. You gotta question your own definitions. If you don't question your own definitions, if you don't undermine your own definitions, then you're going to be sent on this journey by those limiting <laughs> perspectives. Whereas if you see through those perspectives, which takes a little bit of effort to get beyond your own ego, your own insistence that your life sucks and that you're stuck and that this person did that and that this is the way it is and I'm in a time loop because this is the evidence for it. You gotta get over that insistence, which is ego. So that's the effort, the effort to get beyond yourself. But then when you pop that bubble, the whole problem dissolves and this whole new perspective comes in and you shift almost instantly sometimes from consuming and like needing to like creating something epic entirely else than what you expected just a minute before. And then you're like, well, I never actually was in a time loop. I just defined it in that way. That's why my body felt that yes. sensation. And then my mind interpreted those situations as being confirmation of that feeling and that like, Ugh. so you gotta kind of get beyond yourself. But the attitude that Corey was describing is great for that. It's like this new offensive approach. Like, I'm not going to just believe that. I'm going to seek out new perspectives. I'm going to seek out new information. I'm going to seek out an expanded perspective. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to control your phone with my mouse pad. What was this Oh, how sweet. Wesley, <laughs> such a dear yeah. friend of ours. Wesley was at the first uh, conscious class party and he's acted as my bodyguard on several events. He says, for all those new to Bentinho, people who are doubting the authenticity of this tribe, I once was this former military macho guy without feelings and not able to open up with enough mental and emotional problems to this free hugging thing I thought it was. Tree hugging. Oh, tree hugging, <laughs> tree hugging. And here I am loving, caring, sharing all with everyone <laughs> and everywhere. Awesome, dude, <gasps> love you. Oh. Sure. Hey, Bentinho, I went through your course, Enlightenment and Empowerment Teachings. I would like to know if you really see them as two separate things or more integrated. I feel like enlightenment leads a as a byproduct to empowerment, manifestation, etc. What's your opinion on this? Hey, Kevin Martin, uh, I totally agree. So it's only taught in two separate ways because that's where people are typically at. Um, but whether if you go full on empowerment, like the highest empowerment is enlightenment. And the highest enlightenment is incredibly empowering. Like the most advanced, if you will, enlightened state. It's not a state, but like there's no really other way to talk about it right now in simple ways without going into a whole hour long discourse of the nuances. So I'm just going to use some faulty terms here. So bear with me. But the highest enlightened state, if you will, by far like blows any state of empowerment that you could ever experience out of the water you'll be the most empowered you've ever fucking been in ever imaginable in the history of creation, right? <laughs> Talking about the highest state, like realizing the absolute. Like there's nothing that can touch you. Nothing in creation ever <laughs> happened to you. You're absolutely freaking untouchable and there you are all by yourself as the infinite. What could be more empowering than that? <laughs> and vice versa, if you follow the path of empowerment and you empower yourself, you empower yourself, you empower yourself, you empower yourself that will actually destroy your ego over time. And that will actually destroy your limitations over time. And that will get you to these enlightened perspectives. So they're absolutely intertwined, but they're just taught in two different ways because it's more relatable to the mind. Oh, that's a cool point. From Franz M.B. Schwenicke. <laughs> Would be nice if you slash infinity launched your own cigar line with your new cigar friend that comes with a little booklet in the box that explains how to use this tool as a permission slip into the best, into the self without a spiritual term so it can reach even more people. Nice. Exactly, my friend. Also, do you recommend the cigar Ave Maria? Um, 
doesn't hit a ring a bell for me right now, the Ave Maria. So I can't recommend it or not. Uh, but yeah, that is that is part of uh, our plans actually. Yeah. And so a cool little fact: um, a few weeks ago, I met up with uh, I'm a I'm a friend with some of his family for a while, um, but met up with Rocky Patel, which is um, in the cigar world. He's kind of a, a legend. Um, so he owns one of the uh, most popular premium cigar brands in the world. And so we met up at the cigar convention in Vegas and. We just had an amazing time. We just hit it off like best friends. Uh, so he's actually sending us for the party, the conscious class party. He's sponsoring the cigar. So he's giving, uh, he's giving out all the Rocky Patel cigars for that event. And it's possible maybe that down the line we'll do some kind of a line. Um, and then I would want to include education into it because I think pe most people don't know how to smoke cigars in a way that's really conscious and intentional and where you can extract a lot of um, um, realization out of it and a lot of peace and balance. So that's definitely also on my agenda at some point. Not for everyone, but I do want to bring some light into that community also. I thought that was a good question. I'm cool. Get it. How do you best... mentioned the name. By J.P. Floyd. How do you best tone yourself down around people you cannot shine as bright as you effortless as you effortlessly do for me it is family i am currently living with i vibrate extremely high and to them i can tell it appears crazy or manic or something like that yeah how how well for me it's a matter of toning down the vibration because it depends on my focus the intensity of my focus um So for me, it is like turning up, turning up or turning down the energy. Uh, so that's how I do it. It's like turning a switch. Oh, she followed up. It's especially hard when I do not feel pulled to ground my energy around anyone. To ground my energy. I mean, yeah, it's one of those things that just kind of comes with being, being existing in a human world where people have a lot of limitations and taboos and... Um, limiting beliefs and if you shine too brightly so to speak if you radiate too highly then weird things happen uh, in your encounters with those people so you got to either completely accept that weird things happen and that people can't quite function normally around you and that you can't quite interact with them in sort of a normal way either fully accept that i would say accept that regardless but if you want to not tone yourself down, if that's for some reason a choice you make, whether for selfish reasons or for service to others reasons, then up to you. Then um, you have to fully accept the consequences of that. And yes, it can get a little weird. Um, one of the funnier examples of my life, and this happens all the time in different ways to different degrees. But if I become too present and if I raise my energy, then the people around me, not so much my team and stuff, um, they just typically go quiet and become meditative automatically. <clears throat> but just, um, you know, the everyday people that you meet when you go to a restaurant, like this waitress was there and I wasn't trying to do anything. I just wasn't toning things down. So I was very present and um, I probably looked her in the eye or something when she came to take our order. And I could feel, I could feel what was happening. It's like, oh, I was like, oh shit, I should tone myself down because this energy is being transferred. And she like, her eyes kind of went big and she came to our table, like, and she started asking what we wanted or the first few words of it. And then she just kind of stood there, zombified, um, like looking around, like almost <laughs> as if she had amnesia. And uh, she stuttered a couple of words that we couldn't make out. And then she turned around and walked away. So it's funny, but it's also not something, <laughs> it's funny if it happens accidentally, but it's not something obviously that you want to put people through. Um, so she was all flustered, like also when she came back and stuff. So, so sometimes for service to others reasons, it is good to tone your vibration down a little bit, if you don't mind doing that, right? Um, you can also just deflect it. You can focus, still focus highly within yourself, but locate that to be in the inner realms 
and make sure that you don't bring that out too much into the physical dimension. You can also try experimenting with that so that you can still stay very high, but it's like you kind of shield yourself towards others, like you kind of become invisible. You can, in that way, maintain your high state without making people uh, uh, forget who they are and uh, what they were doing here kind of thing. Did that answer that question? Yeah. Cool. I liked what he said. Anand Ghazi said, you may not be a jet pilot, but you've definitely propelled me to heights I couldn't imagine. Oh. <laughs> okay. A few people asking how long you spend in silence and meditation, and a few people asking about climate change. What you think of climate change. What was the first? How long do you spend in silence slash meditation daily? Um, it really depends on the face of my life, my circumstances, where I'm at. Um... Not in the way that, oh, it's dependent on my circumstances, but just in the way that sometimes I choose certain circumstances for a period of time because I think it'll be productive in a certain way, it'll fulfill a certain intention. So then I'm around people, I'm around people a lot. Um, and those people are usually close to me, but I'm around them a lot and still they have their own vibrations and they have their own stories to a degree and they have um, their own needs and desires and journeys. So being in the mirror state that I'm in, that gets reflected and I feel these things and it becomes part of my energy. So I do need from time to time to kind of cleanse that and take a step back and, um, and release that. But that most of the time, if I'm not overwhelmed with it, that just hap it kind of off gases all the time, if you know what I mean. So I take some things on naturally just because of these bodies do that thing, but it also simultaneously off gases. It's like eating shit, but you're also detoxing all the time. Your body automatically detoxes things, right? Um, especially once you start the detox process, your body will continue to detox faster and faster. It will become better and better at detoxing, even if you're eating crap. So <laughs> it's kind of like that. When you're spiritually sort of empty, yes, you feel everything more and more and more, and you could say you take it on. I don't really take it on so much, but it, it, does, it does affect the bodies. Um, to different degrees. But it also it also very quickly dissipates and off gases typically. But so I just gotta kind of balance how often I'm around other people. Because really all that's needed for me to off gas is to not be around other people for a period of time. And that doesn't typically have to be very long un unless I'm overwhelmed and I didn't see it coming and uh, I didn't apply the right balance early enough. But I don't really need a lot of time in silent meditation um, to do any of that. Silence or non-silence is really the same thing. At some point, you no longer really need uh, a formal meditation. But, but don't try to skip to that. Uh, the way to that typically is to have some, some degree of formal meditation, some discipline in meditation. And I still choose to go into full silence sometimes. And it is delicious. It does rejuvenate all my bodies, all my systems. So... Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but that's what came up. So. And then to kind of finish that, and sometimes there's periods of time where I choose a circumstance that's much quieter, and then I spend much more time just being in that silence. But it's not that silence, you see, like it's not separate from anything. It's not a separate state that you have to go to, ultimately. But by all means, go into silence if that's what is relevant for you. It's just that in true non-duality, true non-duality, experiential non-duality, it is realized. That, um... It's not about a certain state. What you are is not a state of silence. Because it's also not a state of noise. Do you want to talk about what you gained in your dark room experience? Um. Yeah, so for those who don't know what that means, it's nothing too weird or kinky. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that um, 
last year and three years before that. And I might do it again this year uh, or upcoming year in the beginning of next year. I spend uh, about a week in a room that was totally dark um, and cut off from anything coming in or out except for my food that was delivered. Um, but the darkness is maintained throughout that process. So there's all kinds of benefits. I really don't want to get into that right now. It would be too much of its own topic. But in short, it just what I just kind of spoke about of needing some time to myself or choosing some time for myself to really reset and go deep into my own essence and to, um, to sever all the connections to other people that have snuck in and like other projects and all the things that I work on throughout the year. It's a great cleanse for me, like mind, body, spirit cleanse to spend a week in a dark room um, where time kind of stops and, and all the processes, all the sort of remnants of any kind of uh, connections that I've made will show up and be purged. So it's kind of like a cleanse for me, like a total mind, body, spirit detox. And I could talk more about subtleties and realizations and all that, but I won't go into that right now. So someone says, go on YouTube live, but tilt the phone next time. Right, so on Facebook, I don't think we had that option, right? No, yeah, Facebook wouldn't let us tilt the phone like yeah. this. We had it all set up nicely like that, but <clears throat> just squished together. So yeah, we'll try to maybe do it through YouTube next time. Have you ever met someone you could feel was even more present than yourself in a way that surprised you, for lack of a better term? Ever? Yes. Oh. Real, uh, recently? No, not in an ultimate way, but um, it can happen in sort of a, a shallower way. So what I mean by that is that it's not that their ability to be present is more deepened than my own, but it's that maybe I've been really busy that day or like I'm in, in a bunch of different conversations at once and this person walks in and on the relative level, they have a more present attitude, which can then remind me or surprise me, if you will. And it, it, um, it sort of sets the vibration for there to be a break in what I'm doing. So on a relative level, yes, it happens sometimes. Um, and I don't mean to sound arrogant with this, it's just the honest answer is uh, that recently I haven't, but ever before in my life, yes, of course, for sure. And also doesn't mean that they don't exist, it just means that I haven't met them, right? But it is cool when you do have that experience that someone sees more than you do. And again, I don't get that experience very often in the last few years anymore. Um, but it helps me relate. When it has happened in the past, it helped me relate. Uh, or even when it happens on that relative thing, that surprise that you mentioned, which does happen from time to time. Um, it helps me relate to how other people must feel around me. When you have the experience that the person that you're looking at knows you more or sees more sees more knows more has more overview has more than you do and it's like it's kind of intimidating right uh, i i i can remember and imagine it's like um it's like oh what are they seeing right now they're, they're seeing more than i am and if you're open to that you can relax and drop into that space and have a really amazing meditative deep experience of yourself but if you're afraid of that, and if you feel exposed, and if you feel protective of, of, um, of your illusions, then you'll resist that, or you'll make them bad or wrong in some way, or you'll just run away and hide.
Do you recommend receiving transmission from different teachers or better to focus on one teacher? Yeah, do whatever, follow whatever resonates. Um, I certainly did, so. Yeah, don't stick to one teacher because why would you do that necessarily? Unless they really are incredible and you have the ability to be close to them and they're truly balanced and they're truly there for your best interest, then um, that might be more of service. But in most cases, for most people, I would say kind of, uh, yeah, get different tastes and flavors wherever you can. And even if you are with a teacher and you're close to that teacher, and you really do trust that teacher and you do feel amazing every time you're around them and it feels super pure and like that transmission is so serving you that you feel so fulfilled and you don't really need to seek for anything else. But if something else shows up as exciting, then um, at least explore it, at least uh, give it the opportunity. Maybe it's a new flavor that wants to be added to your overall experience of yourself. I like this one, uh, more technical. I'd love to attend the retreat in Costa Rica, but I'm wondering if everyone is so young as you all seem to be, seem to be quite a bit older than most and think I might feel a bit out of place. No way, no way. It's about 50-50 <clears throat> usually. So don't worry about that. That there are eight, all kinds of ages show up. It's just up a full spectrum of all different kinds of people from everywhere, every country, all ages, genders. Yeah. Absolute question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Bentinho. I am not from Sunita. Hi, Bentinho. I am not able to jump the edge into the black hole during my absolute meditation. Can you tell me how do I not hold back? Man, uh, it's tricky. It's almost like there's a mechanistic, mechanistic barrier there. It's like an entity is not supposed to leave creation. <laughs> um, even though that's the purpose of creation, is to d dissolve creation, is to transcend all of creation, all levels of consciousness, ultimately. But it's not typically a third density, which is what our brains and minds are made of here at this level of manifestation. This active body that we have currently is not really typically designed to do that. It can do it, and it can be a platform for it, but it's not the most conducive, necessarily. It's the most inspiring because the contrast is the greatest here and the forgetfulness is the greatest and the denseness is the greatest. So it will inspire you to go into the absolute, to want to transcend creation with all the suffering and catalyst that is here. And that strength of desire can get you through that barrier. That's how it happened for me. It's just, just a super strong desire for it. Um, those were the times where I jumped beyond the edge, so to speak and had the exclusive realization of the absolute, not just the intuitive sense, not just the recognition of it being true, but the exclusive realization where I became the absolute and all of creation became like a, a speck of light, um, virtually non-existent, you could say. And um, so it's possible, because I've done it, so I know it's possible, and I have a third density body activation in this incarnation, just like you do, so it's possible, but there is a bit of a barrier there. And in my experience, profound s desire slash surrender slash intention was needed to go beyond that barrier. Can I say this one? Do you have a lineage of teachers? Do you have a lineage of teachers or any teacher who taught you? Um, not directly in physical form. I feel close to several lineages in spirit, but I'm not bound to any of them. One is the Ra consciousness as transferred in the loved one, transmitted in the loved one. One is Nisargadatta and his teacher's lineage. Um, and to a degree, I feel a relationship with Ramana Maharshi. Um, but mostly I would say on the human scale, Nisargadatta, and on the uh, ET consciousness scale, it would be Ra. Those are my two strongest lineages. And on a kick-ass level, it's just Bruce Lee. And on a fictional level, it's Superman. <laughs> Not 
Well. And Joe Black, of course. Mr. Eternity. Uh, what? Which one? Um, the climate, I see quite a few people asking about climate change, which is cool. I like that, you know, you're all aware of that as a topic, but um, maybe we'll get more to that in some of the podcasts because it is a big topic at the moment, right? And there's some relevance to it. Um, I don't want to dismiss the topic entirely. It just would be too big of a topic to address with nuance and balance right now. So stay tuned for the podcast and we'll probably address that there. So who was your teacher? Like, again, I didn't have one specific teacher. I kind of teacher shopped for a while. Um, but most of my realizations have come through my readings and meditations and, uh, which are teachers too, but it's not one specific person. I've never had a guru in that way. But also non-physically, like intuitively, a certain, a certain entities, certain consciousnesses that I feel affinity to. What's some of the most fourth density things that occur in your everyday life at your frequency? Uh, fourth density is pretty much uh, all the time. I mean, love, understanding, compassion, those are fourth density phenomena. Um, quick and linear time experiences. Um, really, the, predominantly my experience is beyond fourth density uh, internally. But on a manifest level, you'll see things are moving faster and faster and um, transparency of mind and thought and body and energy, you call it telepathy, if you will, um, clairvoyance, uh, those kinds of things are just part and parcel of the fourth density transfer. I experience more and more of these about me, around me. Um, but when it comes to my internal state and my way of seeing, a lot of my perspectives are rooted in um, in fifth, sixth, and seventh density perspectives and to degree eight, Is astrology part of your inspiration? Not really, to be honest. Um, it's just a tool. The thing is, with all these perspectives, all these tools, methods, and like astrology, people just put way too much emphasis on it, in my experience. Um, and for some people's journey, it's actually authentically their calling to dissect all these things and to bring some kind of knowledge into that system. But for most people, it's, it's a system they depend on a little bit too much for for my taste, for my flavor. Do you guys lose a dream much? I actually don't lose a dream very much, no. Same. Hey, Jane. It's Noah's mom. Who? Noah. Oh, nice. Nice to meet you, Jane. <laughs> What's the most direct way to overcome lethargy? Whew. Quite a question, actually, because um, to do it consistently, it really depends on your condition, on your state. It depends on your body, mind, and spirit condition. So ideally, you'd have someone with you, a coach, that can kind of recognize all the patterns that are causing you to be lethargic. Sometimes it's an easy, simple, one-fix kind of thing, like just address this supplement or just have this one realization but typically lethargy is a combination of limiting beliefs that have accumulated and that you've been giving into so to speak so it's typically a bit of a process to get out of a lethargic state at least on a consistent basis it requires a uh, a revamping of who you are so my friend uh, mark Eden, for example and rulika shepherd is that how you pronounce it shepherd shepherd um <laughs> they, like they, this is just an example they've been exploring um I think they're gonna teach it soon too, but for themselves, what they did is like a 50 day, what they call it, 50 day? Re... They'll have to chip in in the <laughs> comments or something, but it's like a, it's a 50 day commitment. Now that's not a sing, simple one thing fixed because you gotta commit to it, right? It's a 50 day commitment. 
where they went on a new schedule, new sleeping schedule, where you basically change everything about your schedule. You change everything about like even your diet and what you're thinking and when you're meditating. And if you commit to that for 50 days, it'll give you a lot of clarity on your lethargy and it has the potential to uh, propel you out of it, at least to a degree it will. So if there is a one kind of fixed thing, I would say commit to a complete revamping of your inner and external life for an extended period of time. Um, because typically for lethargy, there's not a press this button and you're fixed kind of thing, in my experience. But nice. Unless your faith is, like with anything, okay, these limitations are not real. With any, <coughs> <coughs> with anything, if, um, just cuff them out, basically. Just cuff out the limitations <laughs> <coughs> and then be free. So any of these limitations ultimately can be overcome by faith and faith alone. Bam, like if your faith is so strong and your intention and desire is so clear that I don't want to be lethargic anymore and fuck, I'm not lethargic. It's not what I am. You can change overnight. It's possible. But your faith is going to be really strong. Basically, any practice is an excuse to gain more faith. That's what practice and time is. The more faith you have, the less time and practice you need. How to truly, by Ishel von Dorn, how to truly know slash become truth. I feel like all those resources just stuff my brain with information, but it does not necessarily deeply change my living experience. Beautiful question. And a lot of people have this experience. Um, stop thinking. Stop thinking. More and more, stop thinking. Recognize your mind. Don't give in to the stories. Don't give in to the inclinations. Don't give in to the desire to think, to accumulate knowledge, to do this, to do that, to believe what you believe. Just let that wheel kind of spin out. Like let the momentum die off. Don't feel it. So deprive your mind, your thinking mind of fuel. And when you do that, you will come to a clarity and a silence where the truth will make itself known experientially. Curious about your view on out of body, astral travel in general. Have you ever explored it? Was it ever part of your journey? Do you see any value in it? It's actually not like lucid dreaming and astral projection has not been a part of my journey. No, um, I have some views on it, but it would take, other, it would take time. Uh, so maybe not right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's helpful for some people. I see it being helpful and awesome for some people, but um, it's never really been a thing or a need or desire for me. Which film do you recommend you watch lately? I really enjoyed, just from an enjoyable perspective, I really enjoyed Knives Out with Daniel Craig. And I, there's something about Daniel Craig that I, uh, that I have come to appreciate, something about his energy and the way he acts. Um, but also the movie is just kind of classic, old school filmmaking. It's fun, it's an entertaining uh, film to watch. Is that the old James Bond? Uh, yeah, well he still plays James Bond, oh, but, yeah, cool. it's that actor. Ooh, okay, one more long question, then maybe we'll uh, call it quits. Cool. Perfect timing. All right, so this is the last one. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Awakened consciousness, consciousness slash pure... Sorry. By Scott Matthews. Awakened consciousness slash purity of heart, if it can be at all by choice. Why do I often struggle to reside there? Is this to do with more than only two main things, i.e. laziness slash unwillingness and or the payoff there is to be had in blame slash conviction of the human disease? What is it as a practice that will most powerfully get me closer? Is it simply one, remaining non-reactive slash triggerless, therefore without the payoff, or two, choosing moment by moment my desired emotional standpoint slash frequency, in parentheses, forgetting what it's like to be me often as possible? Cheers. Wow. 
Why do I often struggle to reside there? Awakened consciousness slash purity of heart. If it can all be by choice, why do I often struggle to reside there? Is it to do with more than only two main things, laziness, unwillingness, and or the payoff there is um, to be had in blame slash conviction of the human disease? <laughs> what is a practice that will help me more powerfully get closer? Men, yeah, um, desire. And the answer to so many of these questions of how is desire. Increase your desire for that thing. So in this case, increase your desire for an awakened consciousness slash purity of heart. Just visualize it. How good would that feel to be in a state of awakened consciousness slash purity of heart, like almost all the time? Forgiving yourself when you're not, but like imagine being in that state like almost all the time. And let that imagination inspire you with greater desire, greater desire. See the payoff in that. If you can see the payoff in the alternative choice, the choice that's not one of separation and anxiety and lethargy and unwillingness, but start focusing on the payoffs of that awakened consciousness, the purity of heart. And when the ego gets excited about it, it will allow you to focus on it. <laughs> you just kind of have to trick the ego by nice. showing it the payoff. So sometimes it actually comes in the form, it's kind of funny, but it's like, uh, when you picture like the most awesome state of non-separation, the ego can get excited about being the best at that. Or like, uh, um, just like, oh, I'll, I'll be so inspiring to other people and they'll validate me and they'll really love me because I'll be in that state of awakened consciousness slash purity of heart all the time. So don't get fooled by those incentives but kind of allow yourself to play with that because then the ego will allow you to focus on it, you see? And in the process, if you're actually focused on awakened consciousness slash purity of heart and you take it all the way, then that ego will be dissolved. But to get there, you kind of have to want it. And to want it, your ego kind of has to be on board to a degree. So you can kind of play with it like that. Cool. Like, I'll be the best awakened consciousness. <laughs> I'll have the purest heart of everyone else. My heart will be pure than everyone else and I'll be so awesome. If that's what comes up for you, go for it because it's the impetus that gets you going there. And then that journey, I promise you that, will dissolve that need, will dissolve that lack belief that caused your ego to want it to then be better than others. So you just gotta visualize the payoffs to help you kind of get going at least. That's then, so cool. Was that the last one? Yep, I think so. Yay, we're looking forward to the podcast too. Just so you guys know, this is going to be on, on the Facebook group forever, so you don't have to worry about it going away. Forever? Well, as long as Facebook exists and we love you too. Thanks, guys. And again, there will be some weekend retreats that will be announced shortly. I already went through them quickly. So Amsterdam, London, Naples, Florida, Los Angeles, California, New York City. Uh, before the Costa Rica event, but those are just two-day events. Um, but still, they might be easier to attend for some of you, or it might be a nice preview for the week long. Um, but just keep an eye on bettimasar.com slash events if you want to attend. And if you want bring the, your friends. the most updated, um, just the most live updates on everything, subscribe to Bentinho's newsletter, which is you can go to bentinomasaro.com and um, at the top of that page, or you'll get a pop-up. At the bottom of that page, I think, right? Oh. Or okay. maybe there's also a tab, I don't know. But if you scroll all the way down on bethemasar.com, that I know for sure, there's a little form for the newsletter. And after like 20 seconds, I think the site will prompt you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Lots Thanks, of love. Guys. Excited to uh, build a relationship again with you guys, like we used to do years ago. Um, love you lots. Wish you all the best. Wish you an amazing new year. Um, hope you celebrate it with us in person. If not, then at least in spirit, tune in to a conscious class and carry yourself with the highest dignity and the highest intentions and the highest self-forgiveness also. Mm -hmm. We love you very much. Mwah.